Okay, first video of um, 2022. As you can see, we we have a polytunnel now. A new one anyway. The one that we had last year um, was destroyed in a storm. So I thought I'll invest money and get a, get a decent one. So this one was about 600 quid or something. This is from First Tunnels down in England. It's 10 foot by 10 foot. And it gives me plenty of space to stick a lot of pepper plants and some tomatoes and even maybe some eggplant aubergine um, in here. It doesn't look very tidy in here at the minute because I put it up last week, put the cover on, did all the woodwork and everything, had to get it done before I went on holiday because a lot of these plants were suffering in their pots and they really needed out. So it's still a little bit untidy, there's still a little bit of weeding to do, there's still some detritus lying around that I'll need to pick up. But um this moment in time everything's seems to be doing okay apart from apart from the occasional pest something's eating that one as well that's not a problem we'll resolve that um first night that we had the tomatoes in the leaves kind of got discolored i think we had a very cold night that night so um as you can see the new growth's fine very cold night, and I think that's what damaged the, the leaves. They weren't used to that. It hadn't been really hardened off for coming out of the polytunnel. The greenhouse is a lot warmer than this. We still have some gaps that need to be sorted out, but that's going to get done just shortly in the next few days. So, um, just quick um, tour. See what we've got in here. Um, we've got some chilli plants over here. These are all chilies. We've got a Malawi bird's eye, cashmere merch, Lemon drop, which I loved last year, brilliant. Um, this one over here is a piñata. It's the piñatas I grew last year weren't very healthy. I don't know if you've seen them in the videos that I did last year, but um, they didn't they didn't come out very well, and this one isn't coming out very well either. I don't think it's a very stable sort of breed as yet. It seems to be prone to a lot of ailments and isn't very hardy compared to other ones. This here's another one this year. This is a Bulgarian carrot. This seed was given to me by the brother-in-law. <coughs> and I don't think he got one out of the seed packet. So just me. So this one's got flowers coming on the top, which is good. That's just happened since it was planted in here. So I'm happy with that. These are um, San Marzano tomatoes. So these are pure lifer making um, sauces and ketchups this year which I, I want to do. I did last year but didn't have the correct varieties of chilies. On this side we have these are all sweet peppers. We've got um and apart from these two actually. Oh there we go. I didn't notice that. Okay that's a um Bartlett's that's from uh real seeds so it's basically just a um Bishop's Crown um or a variation on a Bishop Bishop's Crown. They grew really well last year and I have yet to make a sauce. So I've got um, a lot of them fermenting. And I will be making a sauce with them shortly if they're still viable. I'm going to check all that. So I'll do another video on that. This one over here, Tangerine Dream. I've already got some little fruits on it. Also been affected by pests a little bit. Things eating it. I think that's probably likely to be hoverfly larva of some description. I don't think flea beetles this one here is maybe slugs because just because of the way it's being eaten so there'll be baby slugs hanging around here somewhere we'll deal with those the back there we have a sweet banana down here we have a bengal naga which wasn't very healthy that's why i stuck it in the middle here you know i've stuck a few sort of in between that weren't do, weren't being that didn't look very healthy so if, if they go that's fair enough they weren't part of the original plan but if they do grow, they'll, they'll kind of fit in here with these because these are quite compact plants. Apart, well, apart from the Bartlow's bonnet, which gets quite bushy. Over here, we have a red habanero. We have more sweet peppers. We have a sweet banana. We have a Zulu. Etudia. Etudia is from Save Seed from last year, which I'm hoping... It's, well, it looks like we've got flowers on it already. That's good. Hot chocolate. Grew them last year. They were really good. Another tangerine dream. Here we can see a close-up of what's happening there. 
not looking very healthy at the minute, but there's new growth and it's picking up. The pests aren't going to kill it, it's too, it's too well developed. So once the roots go down, it'll be fine, I think. Over here, I've stuck a squash in today, just one. I had a couple spares, so I stuck one there and hopefully it'll crawl along the back there and not disturb the chilies too much. Over here, just change the ranging here. We've got some aubergines. I wasn't, I didn't get very many aubergines last year. They didn't, didn't do very well. So um, I'm probably not expecting them to do well again this year. Um, they didn't do well in the greenhouse at all. So if they go, I tried, there we are. I, I used to have a lot of success with aubergines. I don't know what it is, it's this location that I'm in the now. The now. Um, I'm not having great success with them. Again, at the back there, I have another squash. I stuck that in today. It's a Muscade de Provence. That's from um, um, a Baker Creek heirloom, heirloom seeds in America. I've got that seed. Um, I've got lots of different varieties. I've got squash beds outside, which we'll, we'll get to in another video. This is a Brazilian starfish. I've stuck this in the middle here. This one will get very tall. Um, the one that I had last year was six foot plus. So this hopefully will... We'll do the same this year. Um, the fruit of it is just amazing. Fruit nut pods. And um, very sweet, very tasty. You can actually just eat them straight off the off the, the plant when they're when they're ripe. They're, they're not as hot as jalapenos, but they leave a really nice taste in your mouth. They're really good. This is a new variety I'm growing this year. This is called a Zimbabwe Black. And um, I think it's a variation on a peri peri. So um it's small black fruits apparently, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, so that's the, the polytunnel. The only other thing I point out is that I grew some marigold from seeds in a seed tray and I've stuck in some of those in here just to offset that. In the coming days I'll be sort of remulching the bits that need remulched in here and sort of reformulating the path. This is all wood chips, it's all going to get wood chipped around about outside the polytunnel. It's going to be built up outside where the, the gaps are at the bottom. And um, then we'll, we'll put all of the, the dressing on, the, the padlocks, etc. So, greenhouses now. So this is a big greenhouse. This is uh, where I do all of my um, propagation and potting on. As you can see here, this is quite a busy bench, but at the moment, but I need to, uh, hopefully I'll get it out here in the next couple of days so that I can get the the pots, all these more organized in here. Um, so what we've got here is just a selection of, look, this is brassicas that are going out shortly. These are leeks, spare tomato. Um, seed tray here where I just planted, where I just sowed um, cabbages for the autumn and beetroot. We've got our like herbs that have just been potted on, some leeks that have just been potted on and these chilli plants which have been potted on into intermediate kind of pots at the moment just basically because these ones were turning a little bit yellow and they weren't quite big enough to put into big pots and I didn't really have enough compost either to, to finish that job at the time. Um, so I'll just leave these ones in these pots just now and let them get a little bit um, bigger and more established in there before I put them on into the final 11 litre pots a la all of these. So um, I can't remember the amount of the variety of chilies I've got this year, how many I've got. It's quite a few, I think it's about 40 something varieties um, spread out. I think I had over 100 plants. Um, not all chilies obviously, some of them sweet peppers, but and um, just the, the standouts here, ones I've never grown before, this one here is called Havana Gold, which is um, now flowering, which is lovely. Um, we've got a tie hot in the back. I don't think they get very big, so that these will all get shuffled around. They're obviously not in their final positions just yet. We've got our super hots, which here's an Armageddon. We've got um, a Carolina Reaper here and a Puma which isn't as super hot, but it's probably in the same range as a habanero. Maybe not as bad as a habanero. Some of the super hot stayed a little bit too long in their smaller pots, so they're, they're quite yellow. 
but I fully expect them to recover all the new growth is, is a deep green so they should be fine you see we've got some pest issues here I'm just going to take these leaves off these sort of yellowing leaves at the bottom because they don't do anything for the plant the plant will just spend waste energy basically trying to fix these leaves um, which we can't really spare I'd rather it went into growing new leaves and growing the plant and the fruit all the energy went into that um, also we have one that I grew last year is a coffee bean tiny little chilies about the size of peppercorns and that's exactly how I use them I'll I dry them and I put them into um, pepper grinders and just grind them straight into food it's brilliant I've put some in sauces but you know they're, they're that small that you don't really notice that they're there so they're just really a um, condiment more than a more than a sauce over here we've got our first chilies of the year this is a Kalugaritsa Kalugaritsa this came from um, Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds in America um, rareseeds.com absolutely amazing um, looking fruits and oh, this one just appeared last week they're very quick growing so this is the earliest one this is the, the one that's that that came first I noticed a lot of people seem to be growing cashmere murches this year this is one here cashmere murch and yep it's got a lot of flowers coming on it already interesting it's one of these sort of double triple stemmed things I don't know if you can see that there if I can make that out they just seem to be fused very nice plant very nice thick sort of leaves as well strong looking healthy looking that's what we like to see. Um, we've got other things here. This is a Hainan Yellow Lantern. I didn't know that they did this. And that's usually a defence against too much sunlight. I didn't, I didn't think that they were plants that appreciated more shade, but there we are. That's that one. So there's two different kinds of compost in action here. We've got this sort of compost here as you can see it's i've had to top water it a little bit so um it's growing a little bit algae which is fine it's not going to do any harm and um, but we also have this compost here which is a lot more woody they're both very cheap varieties um because you don't need anything expensive chilies as long as they've got oxygen and sunlight they don't really care much about anything else um but this has a symptom of it so this gets the water goes straight through it into the tray at the bottom which is nice we like that so i think we'll use that this won't get algae on it in the same way this one will which is handy these are all the ones that are sitting waiting to get potted on we have another puma here and a couple other super hots and we have a fatale some other things <sighs> forgive the sniffling it's been a Sort of a hay fever type, type morning and my sinus is bunged up as per usual. We've got red habanero here. And this one just got potted on. As you can see the leaves weren't weren't looking great. I left them in too long. I left them in the smaller pots, the half litre pots for too long. And they, they struggled. You know, they ran out of nutrients really quickly. This is a new variety I'm growing this year. This is a um, Zimbabwe black. I believe it's related to Peri Peri. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. It's a really nice looking plant. Hopefully they bush out a little bit. Got our orange habaneros. And over here we have another one I'm growing for the first time, which is an ahi red, which I believe is similar to a lemon drop, but um, obviously not yellow, it being an ahi red. So that's a brief sort of tour. We've got about 30 plants in here, but they're not going to be 30 plants in here. There's only going to be 26. Um, the rest of them, we have another greenhouse over the way. So plants will be getting moved over there once once they're all potted on. Um, we'll do that in another video that isn't quite ready to be displayed to the world yet because we're, we're still missing glass from it. It's tidied up, but we need some glass and then we get these ones across and that should be that. So now we'll go across to the, the small greenhouse and check out what's going on in there. So as you see, the plants are 
queuing up. The potted orange plants are queuing up. This one in particular is of some concern. It's the only one I have of this variety this year. It's the it's the white habanero. Um, out of something like six seeds plus two more tries, so eight in total. I only got one plant, and the pests just seem to love it. Whatever it is, it's eating it. Um, I don't think it's wood lice. I think it's maybe a partly slugs, partly flea beetle, and partly um what's the other one I'm thinking of the other one that I saw in here hoverfly larva now everybody knows hoverfly as being a, a, a good thing to have when you've got chilies because um, they keep the, the aphids down they eat the aphids um, just like ladybugs do or ladybirds as we call them here in the UK um, but hoverfly larva actually eats holes in chilies while it's growing so that larva then grows up to be a hoverfly it's probably it's probably more more of a boon once it's flying than it is while it's a larva so it's it's probably worth all this damage and happen this damage happening while the larva's going the other thing that that um another pest that i've noticed in here um now and again is what they call a, a meadow spill bug which is kind of a um the larva of a, a grasshopper type thing and it, it lives in a they call it a spittle bug because it lives in a big pile of spit i'll see if i can find one actually i'm sure i've seen one in here if i see one i will i will film it and i will put it in this video but um they live inside this big ball of spittle and they come out and eat and then they go back into the ball of spittle again to hide and that's basically their defense which is, I think it's quite cool, but um, it's not cool the damage that they do, obviously. Uh, here's another one that I'm trying this year. We've got one in a pot and one in the ground, and none of the two of them seem to be doing all that great. This is a wild Lombok. And as you can see, the leaves are turning very yellow, even towards the top. The new growth actually looks okay, so hopefully that's okay. The one in the pot isn't much different. Also a lot of yellow in there. It actually doesn't show up as, as great on the on the camera as it does in reality. It's actually a lot yellower looking than you see it there. Other ones in here. What else have we got? We've got a Murga scorpion, which is also recovering. It's darkening up. We've got another ahi red there. I'm looking forward to those, actually. I think I've, I've had good reports about them. They're not hugely hot, but... um. They'll make some nice sauces, I would imagine. So, to get back to this greenhouse, the purpose of this one is everything grows in the ground in here. This is um, ground-based. There's no pots. There's no raised beds, anything like that. This is a no-dig greenhouse. Um, it gets mulched once a year with um, either well-rotted animal manure or compost. This is animal manure, um, blended farmyard manure from... Um, from um, What's, what's the name I'm thinking of? Um, it's a place in Scotland. Bathgate. Yes. <laughs> so that's Bathgate blended animal manure that I've put on it this year. Um, I've never had a problem with that. I've used that twice in here over the last couple of years. Last year it was just um, um, compost, store-bought compost that mulched this. And this year it's been the blended animal manure. And there's been a crop out here already. We've had um, radishes. We had radishes, we had spinach, we had turnips that all went in here midwinter and um, they were just harvested about two or three weeks back just before we planted all of these. So the idea in here, all of these are my staple sort of sauce making chilies apart from one or two which are just in here to fill gaps. So the sauce making ones obviously we've got cayenne, that's the four at the back are all cayenne. Over here we've got fuego another fuego over the side, they're, they're, um, they're, they're very similar to Cayenne's, maybe they've got a little tiny bit more kick to them, um, so they've got, they're good in sauces as well, they're also very good for drying. We also have Ring of Fire, two Ring of Fires, one either side again, it's kind of the way I've sort of laid it out is like one that side, one this side all the way down so they know which is which. And we also have Peri Peri, so these are Peri Peri's. Up. To there so i've got four peri peri plants they they 
I only had one successful peri peri plant last year and it gave quite a lot of chilies but we didn't have a lot of them ripening all at the same time so it was a little bit disjointed and ended up just drying them didn't make many sauces from them um, we also have in here padron so these are two padron these are snacking type chilies so these ones are the ones that you'll fry up with um, olive oil and salt you know and put um, on the table when you're having a barbecue just for people to snack on lovely stuff over here again we have jalapenos so we have two types of jalapeno we have this one here which is a jaloro which is again the pests seem to like this one this one did have a spittle bug on it and for some reason it had a spittle bug on it when it was still in my house so i don't know how it got onto it and i don't know how it got into the house but um there you go so it's only went in last week and it's getting some new growth already you can see the the, the holes the spittle bug left but it's recovering already and starting to grow well. Over here we have one that hasn't, has been untouched by pests so far. This is a farmer's market potato. Um, I had one of these last year and it didn't grow very well. So I'm hoping for better things in here, with it being in the ground, with it having the manure, we should get a bigger um, spread with it. I think these ones like more, more space for the roots. So this is just perfect for it. At the back there we have another one which I like to make sauces from, an ahi trumbo. It's not enjoying life in here so far. It's really not, but there is new growth coming. So it's getting used to it. So hopefully that makes a recovery. And we've already seen the wild lombok. So that was just in here as a space filler, just to see what happens. I think these get quite big, that's why I put it in the corner, out of the way. So that's um, the updates of the greenhouses, the chilies. Um, if you enjoyed watching this, um, stay tuned because I'm going to do a weekly update on these. It's been interesting to see how all these grow. Um, so if you like this video, give me a big thumbs up. Um, subscribe. I'm also going to be doing a series of squash videos. All my squashes are out there. And um, actually that's a very interesting video that's coming next. It's just showing you the, the problems that you can face growing those as well. So... If you're of that mind, watch out for those as well. But yeah, please like this video, subscribe, share it around. Um, it'll really help out the channel. I don't have many followers at the minute. I don't have many subscribers. So if we can bump those numbers up, that would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much for watching.